Dear students, good evening. Welcome to Law Excellence IAS. Let us do the editorial analysis for today, 11th November 2022. The first article, should chief ministers have a say in the appointment of governors? Let us try to understand the appointment of governors. Are there any qualifications prescribed for the office of governor? No. The governor is appointed by the president of India. The tenure is for five years. But he enjoys the tenure during the pleasure of President of India. In this scenario, what is the role of the Chief Minister? Normally, Chief Ministers are consulted in the appointment of Governors. This is more like a convention. It is not a constitutional requirement. But this convention is diluted over a period of time. Many a times, Chief Ministers did not even receive the Governors when they were not consulted. If you talk about Channa Reddy when he was appointed as Governor Tamil Nadu, Ms. Jailalitha was not very happy with him. And the same case, Mr. E. S. Dal Narsimhan when he was appointed as Governor of newly formed Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Chandrababu Naidu, the Chief Minister, was not very happy about him. Shivraj Patil, then the Home Minister, called Jailalitha to inform the appointment of new Governor. She has clearly asked that, are you informing me, are you consulting me? So this clearly shows that, the chief minister and consultation with him is just a convention which is violated many a times. Now this article says that consultation with chief minister or giving some say to the chief minister in the appointment of governor, will it reduce the friction between government and governor? That is what it looks into. Remember one thing, what the various important committees have discussed about it. You know Sarkaria Commission, it has recommended for Consultation with the Chief Minister are giving a role to the Chief Minister in the appointment of Governors. The same is uh, reinforced by First Administrative Reforms Commission, Raja Mannar Committee which was appointed by Tamil Nadu government. These all have recommended for a Chief Minister's role in the appointment of Governor. Now, let us see the reality. Do Governor have to act on the recommendation of the Chief Minister always? Answer is no. Many a times governor shall act on his own if necessary again is the advice of the chief minister. Let us take with the imposition of president's rule under article 356 or calling the assembly for a session or with regard to no confidence motion, the governor has, is expected to act on his own. In such a case, if an obligation is created on the governor that he is in office because of chief minister's recommendation will not allow him to act independently. So that's where a consultation with chief minister is okay, but giving a say to the chief minister may compromise the independence of the functioning of the office of governor. Contrary to this, what is happening today, governor is criticized as an agent of the center. In such a case, how to make governor's office relatively immune from the politics of the center. In this case, we can go for an appointment by a committee. This committee shall consist of Vice President of India, Prime Minister of India, if necessary Home Minister, Leader of Opposition, and if necessary Chief Minister of the State. These can be included in this committee, and this, can com this committee can recommend for the appointment of governor of a state. So the governor today is more considered as a Rajbhavan is more considered as the political office of the party in power at center. It means the governor is more and more politically compromised and is acting as the agent of the center. This situation has to change and governor has to become the constitutional head and independent office constitutional head and he has to become the independent office. These are the points which we need to understand. He has to act in a non-partisan manner. The next article, content slot. You know, today, electronic media is very popular and electronic media is expected to grow further. If you talk about the reachability, today social media has the highest reachability followed by electronic media, followed by news print. In these circumstances, every news platform is expected to grow with increase in literate population and middle class. In India, news industry is expected to go grow in the coming years. 
Now, electronic media is not just a news media, it's also an educative media. In this case, they also have to play a role in the nation building. In these circumstances, certain guidelines have been brought in. The guidelines for uplinking and downlinking of television channels in India, 2022. So what these guidelines say is, every company which is owning a TV channel, it has to involve itself with public service. How it can involve with the public service? By promoting the content that is essential for a given society, necessary for a given society. For what it is necessary? Education, development, welfare, national integration. Like this various matters have to be spread through these channels at least for half an hour every day. That is what these guidelines talk about. In this case, central government also can give general advisories. It means directions can be provided by central government on these matters from time to time. Now, what are the issues which we have over here? The, the channels are paying money for airwaves and frequency. So can government be involved once the channels buy that particular thing? Is government is not trying to poke its nose in the private affairs? That is one view. Counter view is airwaves, all these are public property. They all belong to the people. They are temporarily held on a lease by these private channels. And every news medium has a public responsibility to build a good society. And the third is, who is going to pay for this? Is government paying or committing any money for this? These are the things where clarity is missing. Third thing, as I said to you, government can give general advisories to this. In this case, is government trying to interfere and uh, regulate indirectly the news channels? Our government is going to use them as propaganda machines. These are not still clear. The next article, A Way Out of Kerala's Fiscal Vulnerability. Understand this article carefully. Many of the states are going through fiscal crisis. We call this as subnational bankruptcy. And the subnational bankruptcy is increasing now across north, south, east, west. The major reason is freebies which are being offered to the people. In this case, the freebies are becoming an exchange for the voting choice to be made by the people. If you vote for me, you get this. In this case, Punjab stands on top. In the top five, Kerala also exists. How can we say that a state's financial condition is vulnerable? The first thing we need to see is debt to GDP ratio. The debt to, debt to GDP ratio for Punjab is close to 50%. For Kerala, it is 37.2%. And the next is, is the government looking for off-budget borrowings? Let us take many of the borrowings which have been made through corporate companies or corporations established by the government. These are called off-budget liabilities. Why the government is borrowing through these off-budget instruments? Because it has already breached the necessary borrowing limits under Fiscal Responsibility Budget Management Act. And third thing is, what is the interest amount they are paying? At what interest rate they are getting the loans? They are able to borrow. If interest rate is higher than growth rate, it means that I have to pay more interest than what I earn. When interest rate is more than growth rate, that's a fiscal nightmare. Let me say that if my business is growing at 12%, if I borrow my money at 18%, even in spite of earning money, I will be making losses. So today in Kerala, interest rates are higher than the growth rates. And second is um, interest payments uh, out of the revenue receipts. Revenue receipts means tax receipts, which are revenue receipts. So it means how much you earn, that is revenue receipts, recurrent re income. So interest payments, how much you are paying towards interest uh, from the revenue receipts, this is one important indicator. In Kerala, 
the interest payments out of revenue receipts have crossed 20 percent it means whatever they are earning 20 rupees is being paid and after that salaries pensions all this revenue expenditure is still there only interest payments have crossed 20 percent this all shows that the kerala is at the verge of bankruptcy in this context what we have to do the quality of expenditure need to be improved. It is not just for Kerala. Every state, either Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, everyone who is going through the fiscal crisis, we can suggest these reforms. Quality of expenditure need to be improved. How to increase the quality of expenditure? The first one is capital expenditure have to increase and revenue expenditure need to decrease. In this case, equality or quality of spending in the case of revenue expenditure loss making psus are there we need to decrease our exposure to that from profit making psus we need to get the take the necessary dividends from time to time and more the burden like ksrtc in the case of telangana tsrtc these are no more the responsibility of the state because alternative modes of transport have come everywhere and state shall not continue with these loss-making burdens some public sector undertakings or PSUs. And along with that, the capital formation has to increase. As I said to you, capital formation has to increase, capital expenditure has to increase in asset creating, long-term asset creating sectors like infrastructure, education, health, etc. So simple solution is the capital has to increase, quality of expenditure has to improve. How we can reduce our revenue expenditure? Unnecessary programs have to be done away with them. How we can do away with unnecessary programs? The most important tool for this is zero based budgeting. It means we check all the programs and their relevance for today and whatever do not have relevance for today, we remove them. In this case, if we are starting the government today, what programs are necessary, what are not necessary. And we evaluate every program on its relevance. Whatever is irrelevant, we throw them out. That is called zero-based budgeting. So quality of expenditure has to be improved. The tools like zero-based budgeting has to be taken into consideration. These are the points we need to look at. The next is laundered truth. Many a times in the center state relations, the most important concept is investigative agencies. The center has a lot of investigative agencies at its disposal, that is, enforcement, that is, directorate ED, and then CBI, National Investigation Agency. These are the agencies which are there with center. Now, state have their own investigative agency, especially police department. In this case, is the center misusing its investigative agencies um, to haunt opposition political parties and activists? The relevance appears, or today's conditions, that statement appears to be true. In this case, uh, on social activists, they are applying UAPA. And then, in the case of opposition political parties, the ED is being used uh, and Prevention of Money Laundering Act, the provisions of this are being misused. So, the conviction rate, if you observe in these cases, it is very low. ED is in a hurry to arrest the people and to mark them as negative or to break their reputation in the society rather than taking them towards trial. So, the conviction rates are almost low. In this case, the center misusing its agencies to haunt the states and leadership of opposition parties in the states will do irreparable damage to Indian federalism. That point has to be kept in mind. Mr. Sanjay Raut was arrested under Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The judge himself has stated that there is no reason for it. It's a simple civil suit which has been converted as a money laundering case. That's a clear comment on the misuse of the investigative agencies of the center that is not good for federalism. These are the points that need to be discussed. These are the points we need to remember. Here, Chief Justice of India, Chandrachud, the statement I want to make. Now, dissent is the safety valve of democracy 
and opposition has a right to dissent on the government of the day. It cannot be silenced with the use of these missionary by the center. This is the point you can take home. Thank you very much. Have a good day.